All right, so now we're working on the prop. So you can see here I have a prop block, okay? And this is a balsa, 16th inch balsa that I used to form the blade, all right? And basically what I did is first I soaked it and I taped it to the form and I let it dry. And then when it was dry, I just took it off and put a few drops of, uh, you know, epoxy under it and glued it on, okay? And then I made these slits here so that the ribs and the spar have space. Now in the end, you can see I put little things to hold it. So what I did here is I have its 0.018 square. I let it soak for about an hour. And then you can see this holds it on the end here. So I have the wet piece like this between my hands. And I put it there and I get it in place here. And I hold it. So you, the trick is you got to pull it tight. So... What I'm doing is I'm pulling it tight and I wrap it around the tip, all right? You gotta keep it tight there, then you don't get kinks. And when I get it here, I can usually just hold it. You can kind of lick over the balsa. I'll put a little bit of tape. You're, you're not really putting the tape on the balsa. You're really just putting it on the form here and there just to keep it from springing up and things like that. And this is like low, you know, uh, low stick tape, all right? And uh, then I come back to it and I'll pull it around the rest of the way. You can see I have this, so it just holds it in place and there you go. It takes about two hours to let it dry. I like to do it this way because this way you're getting both the shape and the pitch. So, you know, in, in one shot when the balsa is nice and soaked and I like to do it that way. I didn't do it that way years ago, but now I always do it that way. So then when that's dry, the next step is you slip in the prop spar, glue it there and then I'll glue it here, let that dry. And then you just put in the four ribs, okay? Let it dry, you can take it off the form, and then I'm gonna go downstairs to cover it. All right, so I'm gonna show you how I make the prop spars, okay? So one thing is you need a stripper like here. This is from Ray Harlan, all right? You can also easily make this if you have two micrometers and then just a straight edge and that and then there's a holder you can find plans for this online all right as i said i got this from ray harlan and there's some other ones available as well and that's important to get nice accurate cuts okay so then i stripped the two prop spars they're 0.050 square it's about five pound density wood and then usually the first thing I do is I'll sand a little bit of a taper in them because I want them to end up being about 0 0.040 or 45 to about 0 0.030. And for that I just use a little, I just do a few strokes like this. These little nail sanders are really nice. It has very fine and a little rougher. So that's all I do there a few times, okay. And it's also important that you have a little micrometer here so you can check. Now on this one I took the spring out, sometimes I have a spring, but I took it out so you can very easily measure the thickness of the wood. Alright, and then I like to round it a little bit. Now you don't have to do this. Some people just leave it square and that's perfectly fine. But I like to round it and one thing you, have to, you should see is the way to round. Now if you try to twirl it in between sandpaper, I did this years back, it's almost impossible. It's going to break once you get it really thin. So what you do is you glue a sandpaper to a block of wood, this is like 150 grit. And you get this little frayed around the edges, it's already like 10 years old. And then I have another little piece like this, and I glued some to that as well. And then what you do is you just gently roll it. It's going to be a little rougher at first until you get it going. And basically what you're doing is you're sort of rolling it and moving up like this as well to sand it. Like this. And just do it very slowly. And with this you can get a really nice round spar, and I can get them down to .030 or less. You got to stop and go slow and keep checking with your micrometer. All right. And it's easy to put the taper in too. You just do this end a little bit more like that. Now this sands very quick. Okay. So that's how I make rounded spars. And I also do the wing posts the same way. All right. So next I'll make the hub. I'll show you how to do that. Okay. I almost forgot the most important part and that is after you get it to the thickness you want, you know, I have it here with a little taper check with my micrometer. I'm sorry. That's the thickness gauge. All right. Then, um, what you do is you have to check the stiffness of the spars. Okay. And so I have a little jig, you can see it here. And what you do is you simply put it in there like that it just slips right in. Now you can adjust this angle to make sure that it's at zero on this side and then you get it behind the wire and there you go. And then I have little weights, like this is a half a gram, or I think for F1R I used to use a quarter gram, and you hang that. 
and you can measure the deflection of the spar. Okay. Then I rotate it 90 degrees and I measure the deflection in that direction because depending on the wood it may not be the same. And then I mark it. If it deflects more in one direction than another, I mark that. Then you do the same thing with the next bar. Now if the next bar deflects less, you can sand it a little bit uh, so it gets up to the same as the first one. Okay. If uh, the first one was too much, then you have to make a new spar. All right. And again, I do it in both in uh, I check both directions. So then I make sure that both spars are deflecting about equally. And when I mount it to the prop, I also make sure that if it's in more than in one direction than the other on the two of them, that I, I get the directions lined up. Okay. So this is very important because otherwise you'll get wobble in the prop. So you have to spend a little bit of time and make sure you get the stiffness here that it's equal across the two spars. Okay, so I'm cutting the ribs for the prop. All right, and you can use the micrometer stripper to cut the ribs. It's in the background here, and I've done that many times. That works fine. But here I'm going to show you another way, and this is using something called the Jim Jones stripper. You can get this. All right, and basically what you do is I tape down the base so this doesn't move, and then I tape down the bowl so you can see it there. I've been cutting ribs. All right. And then this, you basically slide back and forth. Now, as you slide it to the right here, it, it moves down. And you can see how thick each rib is because it's marked here. It, it'll give you increments of 0.01 inch. All right. And then so all you do is you put your rib form here. I'm using the one for my A6. And uh, you just slice off your ribs. I already sliced a few there. So it's very, very easy to use, which is nice. So we're going to get the prop, uh, the ribs in, and we'll be ready to go. Okay, so here I put the spar in and then I put the ribs in. All right, so this prop is all done. So the next thing you should do is carefully loosen it in case it gets stuck any place. You could, if a rib is stuck a little, you could put a little razor blade in there. Okay, and then it'll just come right off the form. So I already loosened it up. And uh, there you go. So here we have it. Here's a nice prop. So what I'm going to do now is get this downstairs and we'll get it covered. So you see it's nice to have the pitch and the shape in there at the same time. All right, so let's get covering. Okay, so I'm down in the basement. We're ready to cover the prop. Now this is a box I use for covering and I also use it for the wing and the stab and things like that. Usually you can just lie them across here. Uh, in this case I have a little partition I can move around so the prop fits in there. Now I think the trickiest thing about covering the prop is you don't want to get it on the spar because you don't want to stick the covering to the spar. You just want to stick it to the outline. So what I do is I just cover it, the whole spar here, with a little bit of just a paper towel. I cut off a square like this and in fact it's two ply so even after you get that square I can, you can separate the two pieces like this. And then I just fold it in the middle, okay, and then I just drop it over there, all right? So now I'm just going to carefully pick up the box and put it on the floor and we'll get spraying. All right, so now I just rolled out the poly span, okay? And I used to do this on a foam core board. You can see it in the back, I have it covered so it doesn't get dusty. But now that I'm using water to attach it to the frame, I don't even bother with that anymore. So you can roll it out on a paper towel like this, okay? With the static, it'll stick to the paper towel. And then what you want to do is just to crinkle it and this will both decrease the stickiness and it'll also add a nice little texture to it. And what you do there is you just kind of be careful here. You just kind of gently like that, kind of roll it around, all right? And uh, just so you get some nice creases in it. Okay, I've done it smooth too, but I think it's nicer with the, with the creases. And then you can kind of just open it up again, okay, and then carefully lie it down on here and then I'm going to put it on the frame. Now for this, I uh, for the prop, I made a frame and I have frames for the wings and the stabs and the rudder. It's a pretty standard way to do it. And uh, let's see, where is it? Here it is. So here it is. And I actually built this on the prop form. All right. So it has the right pitch and things like that. Okay. So the nice part about this is the way I attach the film, I used to use glue or use Vaseline. It's pin in the neck. Now I just use water. That's more than enough to hold it on. So I'll spray the frame and I'll just, you can either stick it on like that, smooth it out a little bit, or I'll just pick it up and lay it on and get it positioned and then we're ready to cover. Okay, so now I'm ready to spray. 
Now for spray, I just use this 3M Super 77. This works fine. You'll notice I have a paper towel on my finger because you don't want to get any sticky on your finger. Okay, and there's the prop in the box. Now here's the important thing. You never in indoor spray directly on the structure. I never spray directly on the structure. What you do is you spray over the structure and you let the spray settle down onto the structure. All right, so I'm gonna do it here for the prop. So here we go. I'll just test the spray, looks good. And here we go. And there you go. I don't know if you can see that, but I just did a light mist over the prop. And I like to do it from both sides just to make sure it's okay. So let me do it here. And there you go. And I'm pretty far away, okay? So now I'm just gonna pick it up and drop it onto the form and I'll show you that. All right, so now I carefully laid the prop down on the covering, all right, and so it's ready to cut out. Now to cut it out, I used a soldering iron, okay, an adjustable one, and you gotta find what works for you. You can see here I have it set to a little less than half, all right, because you want it to just melt the film and not burn the balsa. If it burns the balsa, you got it too high, okay? So you just want it to just melt the film. And also make sure, usually the first thing I do when I'm ready to cover is, and I come in the shop, is I turn on the soldering iron, because it takes a good 15, 20 minutes, really, for the temperature to completely stabilize, all right? So I'm not going to do it on film here because I need both hands and I have to pay attention to what I'm doing. But just to show you here, let me grab the soldering iron, okay? I'm not sure you can see this, but you'll see the film very easily melts, all right, like that. And then what I do is I usually try to get within about a sixteenth inch and then just carefully go around the frame and cut it out. I leave it hanging a little piece here on the end until I'm ready to trim it on the end. So then I cut it here so I can hold it and then I'll finally trim the end and the prop is off. All right, so I'm gonna cut it out now. All right, so there you go. So now I got it cut out. I'm gonna bring it upstairs and put it in the hub. Okay, so for the prop hub and for the wing uh, sockets, I roll tissue tubes and here they are. And I kind of plasticize them by hitting them with CA. So I'll show you how I roll that. I like doing it this way because you can do whatever size you want. So here's what I'm using for the prop spars. This is .048 wire. You can see I have one on here. Okay. And here's even smaller .040. I'm using these for the wing mounts. Alright, so there it is again. And here's basically how I roll them. So I'll roll one right on this. Let me just move this out of the way. So the first thing I do is I, uh, let me get over here, I rub the wire with uh, some uh, crayon so just get some wax on it you can actually see it going on it kind of dulls it down i use a light color because uh it'll show up on the tissue not that it's a big deal if you use red or something you'll see it on the tissue then i get some tissue paper all right I, and i'm not too ambitious i usually roll a piece i I'm not roll cut a piece maybe this is about two inches long at about a half inch or less wide. You want to save weight on F1R. I've done it with even less. So one little trick is I do it the same way when I talked about rolling the fuselage. I make a little corner here. I just fold it over a little bit because that helps to tuck it under when you get it on the wire. Okay. Now I don't know if I can do this on camera. I'm at a weird angle here. But uh, let's see. So then you get it on the wire. All right, like that, and you'll see that little lip helps you there. And you just kind of pull it tight, because you want to get it smooth, and you just got to get the lip going, basically. All right, so let me give it a shot here. And there you go, I got it. So I'm pulling it tight, and uh, that's it. You just roll it up. Now, when you got it nice and rolled, you hold it with a finger. And then I grab some Ambroid, and I'll put that in there, okay, like this. You see? Also get it on the edge because you want to try to stick the edge down if you can. All right. And then you can roll it the rest of the way. Okay. So there you go. Try to get the edge down. Spin it around a little bit. Now it's important you move it or turn it right away on the wire. Like this, you see? To make sure it doesn't stick. So you can see I can move it. I'm twisting the wire a little bit. It only takes a minute or two for the Ambroid to set up. Okay. And it's nice and loose. And there you go. It's almost set already. So you can kind of smooth out the edge. 
or if you have an edge that sticks up or something like that, just, uh, you know, hit it with a little bit of, I, I mean, I, I actually just trim it off because it'll save weight. So you can see I have it on there and it's nice and, uh, you know, it's drying there, there, now it's dry and it's, now, whoops, the other one came off and it's nice and loose. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm too low here. Okay, so there it is. It's dry, it's nice and loose. We're ready to go. So what I do is I'll trim the end off on the wire. Okay, because that didn't come out. The ends usually don't come out quite as nice as the middle. And then I'll show you the next part. All right, so normally if this was like for a wing thing, I would just slide it like this and soak it with CA, let it dry, flip it over and do the other side and we're done. And that makes like almost like a little plastic. I know people buy some expensive plastic, but I like doing it this way. And you can make whatever custom size you want. All right, so I'll show you the next part. Okay, so the next thing I do is I cut off a piece about the length I want. For the prop shaft, it's actually it's a little under three quarters. It's probably about six eighths. Then I have a little bit of .050 balsa, square balsa left over uh, from the uh, prop spars. And so I cut a piece, I don't know if you can see this or not, it's just about a quarter of an inch long. That's gonna make a little hub. So then what I do is I mark the middle of it, of this, and then I insert this. There's already one in there. And then I just hold it up to the light, you know, and push it in with a smaller wire, like a 32nd, until it's centered. I can see now that it's centered, okay? So then I made the prop shaft, all right? And I've tried down to 0 .008 wire, but I thought that was a little bit too low. So I'm back to 0 .009. All right, now make sure on the end where you cut it, let me grab it. Uh, on the end where you cut it, I use either pliers like that, this, these are these Zoron, and they make a nice square clean cut. Or on the other hand, if you just have snips, make sure you get a file and you file it a little bit on this end because you don't want any burrs to affect the rubber, okay? So I already did it, I cut that. So now what I'm gonna do, and I just do this by eye, I, I find a hole there, I'm gonna poke this through okay through the balsa and then i'm going to get it the right length bend it and then i'm going to kind of glue it in place with a little ambroid okay and after i'm done with that then finally i'm ready to ca it and i'll show you that all right so i got the prop shaft in there and you got to make sure it's nice and aligned you know everything is straight i also like to let it kind of bend down a little bit so it pushes up against it a little as well and I put some ambroid on that and then you know thoroughly let it dry wait at least an hour and then the next part is I'm gonna soak it with a little CA alright so I have it facing down so it doesn't run up and here's a CA okay so it's very thin do this over a paper towel and then what I do is I just hit it with a drop like this to get it thoroughly soaked and then also you gotta tap it out here on the end let me do the other side and again tap it out You'll actually see some glue coming out. I hope I'm not off screen here. If you want to be sure, you can use a toothpick and kind of put that in. You say that'll soak up any excess that's on the inside. And then you'll see it looks kind of shiny, all right? It's fairly well soaked. So then I'm just going to let it dry here. All right. There it is. Now, you really got to let it dry for a while, like a good, you know, hour to really solidify. And then you should be... Uh, pretty much ready to go. So here it is. I've let it dry for a few hours. So the next thing I do is I, you know, clean the shaft off here. I get a knife here and I just scrape a little bit because you might have a little glue on there, some Ambroider CA. And you want to clean that off so that the washers sit up nice and tight against this, okay? So then I put the washers on and here, here I just cut them myself from this, uh, Teflon tubing, or you can just buy them. It's, you can get all this at Indoor Free Flight Supply. All right, now make sure you use two because that has less friction than if you use one, okay? So the total weight of this ended up being 20 milligrams, which is pretty good. All right, so the next thing is we're gonna put the props in and then we're ready to go, all right? However, I like to let this sit overnight, let everything fully cure and dry before I put the prop blades in. Okay, so we'll do that next. All right, so now I put the prop in the hub and there's three things you gotta do. First, you gotta put the prop in and accurately measure the length, okay, to trim the end off. I always do that when it's, you know, in the hub. 
all right now once you get the first one in the important part is to make sure the second one has exactly the same length spend a little bit of time to make sure it's exactly the same length all right so after you do that uh, then what you got to do is get them at the right angle and here I have a little jig from A to Z all right um, it's a 12 inch prop I'm using a 21 inch pitch so here you can adjust the angle to get the 21 inch pitch and it's nicely labeled uh, otherwise you could just take a 45 degree angle if you want to just make a simple jig and then figure out how far you have to be out to get a pitch of 21 okay the formula is 2 pi times the radius times the tangent of theta the angle so that's how you can figure out what angle uh, where the 45 has to be the tangent of 45 is 1 so it's pretty easy okay now the final thing is I just attach it I just put a drop of a little tiny dot of ambroid the thinned ambroid all right usually on the top here and I'll let that dry then I'll lift it up and I'll put a little on the bottom just where the balsa meets the uh, tube okay and on that you really got to take it easy I don't put much I just put a little bit and the reason why is if you want to change the pitch or you have a broken blade you can soften it up with a little bit of acetone and get it out and put in another one okay but you don't need much all right in order to uh, you know hold it in there okay uh, also here I don't have the tape on uh, that you can see it's just uh, a little edge that I folded over to keep it from spinning around so don't put any tape that's only a Pona 018 out square outline so it'll, it'll break pretty easily all right so now we have the prop all done and we're pretty much uh, ready to get back to work okay so I just finished the prop you know using this form all right I'm just gonna add on a little extra here because I'm gonna make another form and I'll quickly show you that so this is a 14 by 20 so it's a 20 inch pitch all right and uh, and I you know and then I set the prop at 21 I want to try another one because some people use a little uh, lower pitch so this is a 12 by 15.5 all right or also got it from J&H Aerospace and so I'm going to try doing it on that all right so you got to mark a center line okay and then I basically cut the blade out from the plan and then I put it on pull so this is a little thicker than a 16th I just looked around I usually use around a 16th okay and then I mark the whole thing and do this with pencil because when you soak it and dope it if you do it in ink it's going to get all blurry and stuff like that not that it matters that much but still so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to briefly soak this in water. I don't do any long soakings. It just has to bend a little bit. And then I'm going to wrap it to the form. And I usually use some cloth gauze I have. Okay. And let that dry overnight. And then I'll show you the next part. Okay. So here it is. So at this point I soaked it in water. I wrapped it and I let it dry overnight. Okay. Then I like to dope it because I don't want the water affecting it or anything. So I put three coats of dope on it. All right. And that really takes a few hours to fully cure. So after it was dry enough, I just bound it to the form again. So you can see it fits on there really nice. All right. So now I'm ready to do the final thing. So I'm going to make the little V cuts like here for the prop. And then uh, I'll make the V cuts. Then I'll glue it on. All right. Just a little epoxy. Don't get it on the edges. You don't need that much. Do it on the bottom, but leave it away from the edge. You don't want the glue seeping out. And then after that's dry, I'll use a file to put the little space for the spar there. Then I'll put these in. And then finally, I'll glue these. All right, I'll show you how I have this. So I wrap it around this way. All right, so this holds that side. Okay, and then I wrap it around. And then this holds the top side. And I put that there because it raises it up a little bit. And that way you have a space and you can just slip the spar right in. All right, so I'm going to do the rest of that. Make another spar. Uh, I'm sorry, make another prop. Now the nice part about this is I can experimentally test the prop. I can go fly and see how it is compared to the other one. All right, and that should be a lot of fun. Okay, so I have a bunch of props ready to go. And you can see here I did change one little thing from the earlier props. These are the earlier props. And you can see I ended the spar here. You know, we're always trying to save weight on indoor, okay? The problem I have with that is once in a while it would kind of, the prop would stop, you know, would hit the astroturf on the tip and then settle a little bit and guess what? It would snap. It would break right here, all right? 
And that happened several times. So after that, I said, you know what? I'm not going to, I'm going to, if the spar goes all the way, then I'm not going to have that problem. So you can see on the later props now, the spar goes all the way. And I haven't had any problems with that at all. Okay. All right. So we're ready to go. Where is it? Go, we got a little climb going. See, I hope I don't go too high here. Got a nice climb going. All right, that's enough now.